Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is Tuesday, August the 18th, and this is your daily word of encouragement. And we're continuing to build on the theme of self-control that we talked about in the sermon this past week as we finished up the series on the Spirit-Fueled Life, looking at those qualities of the fruit of the Spirit uh, that Jesus wants to see continue to grow and emerge in us as His, as his followers. And uh, when it comes to self-control, so much about control of, of our actions is about controlling our thoughts. And as we've been saying repeatedly with this theme of self-control, it's not about me trying to exercise more willpower to, to force myself to think about certain things or to not think about other things, but it's allowing, uh, it's about surrendering my thought life, surrendering, being open and honest and vulnerable about the things I've been struggling with, surrendering those ideas, giving those things over to God to allow Him to continue to guide my thoughts when I have thoughts that are leading me towards uh, things that are hurtful or painful for myself or for others or destructive that I feel the Spirit's conviction to lead me back towards thoughts that are producing life and peace and hope, uh, truth, uh, you know, being being guided by it in choosing to only deal in truth. Um, but uh, that's certainly easier said than done because we can easily forget uh, to remember to surrender those thoughts over to Jesus on a continual basis. But it's so critical that we do. Um, sometimes people, when they have a, a troubling thought in their mind, they might even describe it by saying it's just running wild. I've got this worry or this anxiety, and it seems like it's just running wild through my brain, and I can't seem to I can't seem to capture it or take hold of it. Which reminded me of a, a powerful and profound little bit of scripture that we find in Second Corinthians chapter ten. Um, Paul is in the midst of, of defending his ministry to the Corinthian church. There are many in there that were doubting his ministry, doubting his motivation, doubting his sincerity, doubting his um, his uh, uh, position, his authority as an apostle. And so in that, that part of the letter to 2 Corinthians, he's spending some time kind of defending his ministry and, and demonstrating how he's been faithful and, and, and not bragging or, or trying to put himself on a pedestal, but simply just saying, listen, guys, I've always come to you. It's really Paul, one of Paul's most vulnerable letters because he is really just kind of opening himself up to people, many of whom have been critical of him, saying, Lord, you guys, this is who I am. Um, this, is, this is all that I am. This is all that I ever hoped to be before you. And in the midst of that defense of his ministry, he says something really profound about our thought life and uh, the very simple action that we can take when we find ourselves uh, being consumed with or driven by thoughts that can be, again, destructive for ourselves or destructive for for other people. Um, What we need to do with it in that moment, uh, not to delay it and not to to wait for it to pass, but in that moment when when we sense those thoughts rising up in us, exactly what we should do with it. And as found in 2 Corinthians, again, chapter 10, verse 5. And it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And here's the key part of it. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I want to read that part one more time. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Take captive. Capture it. Uh, before it begins to run amok, before it begins to run wild, or even as we sense it, leading us down the path of something that's going to lead us towards sin or or, or, or uh, making poor decisions or poor choices or uh, destructive behaviors, destructive patterns. Before it even begins going down that rabbit trail, we capture it immediately. And we pull it back and we say, what's true about this? What's accurate about this? What When I compare this with what I know to be true about God and about who Jesus is and about his, his desires for me in this moment, his desires for me in my life as a whole, the person that he's calling me to be, what's true about this and what is false? What is leading me down a, a, a road or a path of, of deceit? Taking that thought captive, capturing it in that moment before we allow it to um, to, to kind of marinate in our minds or for it to kind of to take root in our minds and it begins to drag us down the wrong path. You know, we talk very often about uh, if, if you have the capacity uh, to worry about something, if you have the capacity to, to let yourself grow more and more anxious, then you have the capacity to meditate. Uh, because all meditation, all worrying is, is having a, a thought that you fixate upon and you allow that thought uh, to just run rampant in your mind over and over again like this, this bad tape that's on a loop. So why not replace that tape with, uh, which is oftentimes full of, of, of that false evidence that appears real, you know, it's that acronym for fear, false evidence appearing real, that may be half true or not even true at all, maybe just nothing but deceit. Why not replace that with what is true? Take that thought captive, capture it. Ask yourself, what's true about this? What would Jesus say about this? 
and replace it with what is true, what God would have you think, and ultimately allow that renewal of the mind to ultimately change your behavior. So uh, we're going to keep things really simple and short and sweet today by just simply saying that verse over and over again. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Where is this thought leading me? Is it leading me down a path that's, that leads to me to obedience to Jesus? Or is it leading me to a path that's more about pleasing self or about doing hurt or harm to myself or to someone else? And as we capture those thoughts, that's what the idea of self-control is all about. It's not, it's not me telling me what to do or think. It's me surrendering my thought life, surrendering my actions over to Jesus and trusting that his path for me is always going to be the best. Let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, today as we come before you, we just uh, pray that you would be Lord of every part of who we are, every part of our lives, Lord, and certainly that includes our thought life. So Lord, as we go throughout our day today and as we have thoughts pop up in our mind, uh, Lord, is it the moment we sense that, the moment we sense that we're dwelling on that thought for any period of time, Lord, I pray that we would indeed capture it and ask ourselves what's true about it, what's true according to your word about it. Take captive each and every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Lord, let that be the, the verse we meditate upon all throughout this day as we seek to allow your spirit control to emerge in us. We pray all these, uh, all these things in, in your powerful and holy name. Amen. God bless everyone.